So exploiting code on a server with server-side vulnerabilities. Now, what does that mean? How does that compare to other types of vulnerabilities? And what are some good resources out there for learning this stuff? This video was requested by Alex Katsanos. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. A very uh, involved viewer in this channel. I always see him everywhere. This guy, he's always commenting and uh, supporting the channel. So yeah, thank you, Alex, for this video suggestion. And for all you guys watching, feel free to submit any uh, video you'd like to see as well. So what I have here is the Port Swigger Academy site, which, by the way, on the topic of resources, it is a fantastic resource for any kind of web-based vulnerability that you want to try to know more about. And so the reason I have this here is just so we can look at, at a high level, at a glance, a bunch of different vulnerabilities you might find out there on the internet. And they have different classifications. Some of these are client-side, some are server-side, some are authentication-related, business logic, stuff like that, right? Now, usually when we talk about client-side vulnerabilities, let's, let's start there, right? Usually when we talk about those types of vulnerabilities, we're usually referring to exploiting another user or, you know, someone else is involved uh, in the equation. So, for example, with cross-site scripting, if you're familiar with that, you know, if we find a cross-site scripting vulnerability, the reason we call it client-side is that we're exploiting code that's running in our browser, in the case of the internet, right? It's going to be running in our browser. Usually this is JavaScript or HTML, something like that, right? But, you know, as opposed to server-side where the code is running on the web server, so not on our machine, but actually on the back end. So that is ultimately what distinguishes client side versus server side. Is it running on your client, which is in the case of the internet, typically your web browser, but it could be some kind of application, right? For example, if I fire up Burp Suite, right? That client application is the client. And I don't know if I'm, I'm doing like, say the collaborator, then their servers over there or their activation servers, that's the server side, but I have a client here. If I, you know, maybe to, to tie this back to a, for you gamers here, right? If I, if I open up Steam, right? So if I open up my Steam right now, that application is my Steam client, but there's also Valve has some Steam servers and that's where the games are stored and stuff and you download it from their servers onto your client machine, right? So that's kind of the client server model. If I was looking for a vulnerability and I found a vulnerability in Steam, but it didn't affect the servers. I was just exploiting something on my client. That would be a client side attack, a client side vulnerability, which obviously in many, you know, depending, I guess it does depend on what the vulnerability is. Maybe I can find some kind of bypass um, locally to do something that would grant me more access to something or something like that. Right. But typically I, you're not going to want to exploit yourself, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. Why would you want to hack yourself? You want to hack other people. So what you would do is you would test it out on your machine first. And then once you got it working, you would figure out how to, you know, automate that action, generate like a link or something like that. Have someone click it, you have phishing attack, some social engineering, and then it runs on their system and maybe sends you some data or whatever it is, right? In cross-site scripting, Usually it's running some kind of JavaScript payload. And that is why on these client side attacks, usually it involves some kind of social engineering or something like that because you have to attack another client. You have to run it against another user, right? Because typically uh, that's how you get value out of it because you don't want to hack yourself, right? And with uh, server side vulnerabilities, you're attacking the server, so usually um, there aren't, there doesn't need to be other clients involved. Now, I could find a reflect or a stored cross-site scripting where it's stored on the server, my my JavaScript payload, right? And that would affect anyone that visits the page. <clears throat> so, but it's still a client-side attack because it is abusing code that's running in my client in my browser. Right, so that's the key distinction is 
where is the code that you're attacking? Is it on the in the client or on the server? That's what I really want to emphasize. If you are diligent about learning this stuff, it's only a matter of time before, let's be honest, you're ready to start applying for jobs and be a, become a part of the actual field, right? You're in the security community now. It's a great start. But let's be honest, we all want to we all want to get paid here, right? Unless you're doing it as a hobby or a blue teamer and more power to you if that's the case. But yeah, once you reach that point, you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to absolutely smash it. So go ahead and check that out at the link below. Going down the line, um, obviously this one is an authentication vulnerability, so we'll skip over that. But something like, uh, we'll just start with SQL injection, right? This is a server-side vulnerability because you are attacking how the application is passing the data to the database, and that is going to be on the back end. So because this code is going to be on the server, it's a server-side vulnerability. And if you go down to something like uh, external entity injection, this is a server-side vulnerability. You're abusing how the application is handling XML data. And, you know, you can start running your own custom entities, uh, click jacking. This is definitely going to be client side, uh, server side. Some of them have server side in the name and then it's really easy to know, right? Server side request forgery, for example, um, server side template injection, but OS command injection. There you go. That's another one that's definitely on the server side. And, uh, let's see here. Deserialization server side, insecure deserialization, I should say. Directory traversal, right? You could have PHP app that has it on the client side. It could be client side code, but this is for all intents and purposes, we'd consider this a server side vulnerability. Um, but it's it has to do with how the, uh, the application is validating or not validating the paths, I should say, right? So... That's kind of how you go about it. I go about figuring out what is what. But the ones that are like super client side, you're like cross-site scripting and um, and stuff like that, right? Especially if you're attacking other users, that's a hint. It doesn't absolutely mean that it has to be a, a client side attack just because you're attacking another user. But a lot of times on in client side attacks, that will be the case uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. But just to give you some additional resources, try Hack Me, a great beginner resources that I always love to recommend. And, you know, beyond that, you know, maybe you could dig through the channel. You could certainly find some videos that I did on some of these different vulnerabilities here. Level one is start with try Hack Me. Level two is do some kind of CTF type of thing, right? Maybe OWASP WebGo or Juice Shop or... Um, Port Swigger Web Academy, and then level three, you know, your your ninja hacker level is create your own lab, exploit it, patch it, do a write-up. That's for your, all the tryhards out there. But yeah, hopefully this helped answer your question, Alex, on, you know, what are the differences between server-side and client-side and some resources to help you get started. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know down in the comments. And if you want to get into more technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. And thanks for watching.